All right, folks, this is going to be a garden overview. As many of you have watched some of my previous videos on my garden, you've seen the changes that I've done over the last year or so, and I've done earlier videos where I've had certain plants that I'm putting into motion and other plants that I've decided that aren't going to work out. So we're going to go back and take a look at some of the stuff that I've done and see what's changed and what I hope will be an improvement on this year's garden. All right, going to start right over here. This is my bird bath. It was actually a floor fan that I was getting ready to throw out because it was broken. And as I was disassembling it and taking it apart, I realized that flipping it upside down and using the base, I fill it up with water, instant bird bath, and so far no complaints from the birds. In these two sections of cinder blocks, it's just wildflower growing in the middle, various types of flower seeds, and then some leftover herbs that I had from the previous year. I planted those. Loose grass coming in, nothing really significant going on right now. All these cinder blocks had originally lined the perimeter of my garden when it was in the front yard in its original spot. Now, this is the area that the garden was in last year. As you can see, the lawn's starting to come back in most places and it's really starting to turn back into just a front lawn. And that's where the new garden is. Now, first thing up is I put in a fence around the garden. It's significantly smaller in the square footage. The fence is primarily for those of you that remember, I've been having a long standing battle with woodchucks on my property. And so this is primarily to keep them out. It, it doesn't stop chipmunks, it doesn't stop birds. It's mostly to deter them from getting in. Now my greenhouse behind me, I am actually still using it. It's in the process of, we'll say, a little rehabilitation. I've got some issues with the flooring and I still haven't finished my spring cleaning from earlier in the year, getting everything out and reorganizing things. But I do have uh, several pots of seeded herbs in there and a few plants growing as well. But that will be for another video later on. Starting on the inside of the garden, over here in these cinder blocks, I've got some herbs growing. I believe it's going to be uh, sorrel growing out of these cinder blocks here. My hand tiller, my new compost bin. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this. So my old compost bin was made out of pallets, uh, put together basic square wire, screws, that sort of thing. And it did well enough, but the pallets were wood and they started to deteriorate because of the constant moisture built up from the soil. So in the process, I tore it all down, got rid of all of that, and I decided to go for a plastic uh, garbage can. It's 32 gallons. What I've done was a few things to help the process with the composting of the material. So first off, a wheeled garbage can, very necessary for moving it around, especially once there's weight inside of it. Before I did any uh, filling, I drilled holes down the sides and in the front and in the back, as well as underneath for air circulation and drainage. I took a piece of two inch PVC pipe, cut it to the length approximately of the inside the pipe also has vent holes drilled all the way down. I think I've got 12 holes drilled through it. So this pipe goes to the bottom of the barrel. There's a small half cinder block at the very bottom that I put the pipe in and packed some dirt around it just to hold it steady. Then I took all the compost, which when I filled it, the top layer of compost, which was the least broken down material, is now at the bottom. And then of course all the newer stuff was put up towards the middle. And then these are actually uh, greens that we had cut up from last night and the last two days underneath. I'm still able to get the hand tiller in just to give it a little mixing, but smaller compact area, I can close it up. It does better heat retention, natural moisture retention. Air still circulates getting into the soil both ways to allow better aeration of the material without having to constantly hand turn it. And of course, with the black material, it's going to absorb and retain heat more from the sun, aiding in that process. With the wheels on it, it is heavy. It's probably at least 70 pounds worth of material in there, but I don't have to really move it anywhere. Should I need to move it, it can be done. Now, next up, and you probably heard that beeping sound. In fact, I'll just go to that right now. 
This little device here uses 3D batteries. I've got two of them, one up here and one at the other end of the garden. They basically make a high pitch vibration and sound placed in the ground, like you can hear there. It helps disrupt and distract and basically annoy ground burrowing animals, primarily moles and woodchucks, that sort of thing, to keep them out of the area, which I will say it has worked so far. I've not caught a woodchuck actually in the garden in the morning. The fence hasn't been disturbed. I also have this solar motion light here, primarily for the purpose that at night or early in the morning, if something does come in, it's going to activate the center and it illuminates the entire working area of the garden. We got Gary the goose there looking a little worse for wear. These cinder blocks here, I'm going to tell you right now, I have forgotten because I didn't get around to marking them originally when I planted them in, but I've got four of these, one set in each corner. Each one has a different set of herbs that I just put in to see how they'll do. So pretty much I have to wait until they develop more so I can recognize what they are based upon the uh, packaging that they came in. Now, this pinwheel, and there's another one at the other side of the garden, it's less about decoration, but I saw online, as you know, many of you do, certain animals are easily distracted or scared off by weird movements or strange moving objects. So when the wind's blowing, it provides both a visual because of the light getting reflected off of it and a motion sensory input. So it keeps certain animals away from the garden area because they're not sure what that is or what it might do to them. And over here, thermometer, rain gauge, just to keep an eye on things for the temperature wise. But since most of the garden, with the exception of the things in the greenhouse, it's just all outside, all out in nature. And that's just the way it's gonna be. Now, this garden in comparison to where it was in the middle of my front yard before, it is probably about a third the size. Yeah, I'd say about a third of the size. I still have a decent amount of things planted. And as I'll show you, I'm doing a combination of direct sow into the ground. I'm doing buckets. I've got several pots set up and I've got some areas that are a semi raised bed. Now, starting along here, pole beans, and there's actually some okra planted in there as well. All of this along the inside perimeter of the fence. The primary reason why I did it on this side is right now, this is the west side. East side is behind me. Most of the sunlight is going to be blocked by the trees that my neighbor has until it gets to be about 10 or 11. After that, it's all direct sun for at least another four hours until it gets closer to four o'clock, three o'clock, where I've got trees on the other side of my property that start shading it. <laughs> and this bucket here is supposed to be eggplant and pepper. That's either one eggplant or one pepper. I haven't been able to determine which. I used paint sticks and I just simply wrote down what it was with a black Sharpie, put the date on it that I planted it. And that's the easiest way I keep track of it. <laughs> this one, spinach and radish. I didn't fill all the way up towards the top or up towards this area with soil for two primary reasons is because I didn't want them to become too overexposed to sunlight. So they still get direct high noon, you know, 1130 to one o'clock light, but it keeps them from getting too hot during the day when I can't attend to them, especially on longer days where it gets hotter earlier. Today, it's only going to be up in the low 80s, I believe. We had upper 90s or upper 80s going into the low 90s yesterday. Now, down in here, unfortunately, the natural vegetation grew faster than what I planted, but I've got some snow peas starting to come up along here. Over here, I got a bucket of beets and lettuce that should be growing. I've got tomatoes with some carrots and another bucket of tomatoes with carrots. Now I primarily grew those in the five gallon buckets, mostly for the mobility that it gives me to be able to pick it up, move it around. The setup that I have right now for the garden is about what I had planned on it to give my, uh, myself easier access to getting to everything but it still allows me to add more if I need to. I can add more buckets in and a few other things 
to uh, increase the yield if I want to. Now inside this big potter plant, I've got uh, corn, yellow squash, and pole beans. As you can see right now, the pole beans are starting to come up. The squash is starting to grow, get a little bit bigger. The corn, I'm holding out possibly. We'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. But this is one of the ideas I had because the depth of the bucket from the soil line down is just about 16 inches or so. It's about two feet in diameter. It's a large enough volume that I can definitely get these items growing now. And then once they get a little bit bigger, I'll be able to see which ones are gonna produce more and give me more yield. This other large potter plant, same thing. This one, corn, a uh, different type of squash. I believe one is butternut or one is zucchini and the other one is yellow squash, possibly butternut. Again, some of these things I didn't get a chance to write down because when I was doing the work, I was kind of in a rush to get everything set up. Normally I do get very OCD about certain things and you know, I've got a clipboard, I draw things out, I list everything down. I, to one extent, streamlined a lot of that because I found that even though planning is always good, sometimes I'd spend more time planning than doing. So this was sort of like taking my idea, the thought process in the head and just sort of throwing it up onto the wall like spaghetti, seeing what sticks and then just going at it. Now, in these two laundry baskets, which I think I paid three or four bucks each from like Ocean State Job Lot or a dollar store, I think Ocean State Job Lot, I took at the very bottom, I drilled three holes, I believe in each one, <laughs> took some of the uh, new compost material from my compost bin, I put in a layer that filled right to the bottom. Then I took some dry leaves and grass clippings from around the yard and I put my uh, potato seeds in. Now I didn't buy the seeds. These were sprouting potatoes that we had from an earlier purchase that I kept in a paper bag in the kitchen for about two or three weeks until they sprouted well enough. I put those in, covered them up with probably a two to four inch layer up to here of yard debris kept them watered a week or two later they start to poke up through the top added more layers this layer up here with the uh, straw this is probably week two or three of adding the layers every three or four days and at this point i'm just going to let the potatoes start coming up because they're coming through the top they're on the sides a little hard to see they're over here on both of them but they're white potatoes in each I may do a third basket and try to do sweet potatoes which is a slightly different process because with the sweet potatoes the actual potato itself when it starts sprouting that's not what is going to develop into more potatoes it'll start vining out uh, like a flower and once those flowers those vines start to flower up those individual flowers when you remove those and then plant those in water and let those start rooting and growing, those slips are what actually develop into the next set of sweet potatoes. So unlike white potatoes where the white potato itself effectively is the root and it grows from that, sweet potatoes, the vines grow out, you pull the slips once they start to flower, you get them watered, get them growing, and then they develop into the individual sweet potato sets that you'll start harvesting later on. Now, the open slats along here on these three pallets, I actually took some seed. I took, I believe, a few lettuce seeds and some carrots and some other things, placed them in between in the ground here. Lettuce and I think some beets, carrots and radishes also along here. One, just to see how they're going to do because the soil that's under here was originally part of the soil from the compost bin, so it has a higher nutrient level. What I primarily intend to do once I buy more soil is fill the areas up to the level of the slats all the way through and that will become sort of my raised bed gardening and I will probably look at doing another set of radishes, beets, uh, carrots, that sort of thing directly in, in between the slats when they're already filled up. So this is sort of a test run in the beginning. I'll do them later on. Now this patch of dirt pretty much looks exactly like what it is, but there's going to be hopefully lemongrass starting to grow and develop in here, a uh, broadleaf spinach and kale through here, 
inside this wire cage which I just put in for a temporary purpose is a watermelon uh, husk the rind a half watermelon carved out I put in good compost in it I actually put some watermelon seed inside it and then buried it just underneath the surface so hopefully over the next week or so I'll get a new watermelon starting to come up and I'll put in a different cage around it so this way the smaller critters the chipmunks and the mice can't get directly in and get at it and we'll see how that goes see if I can get a watermelon going before the middle of the summer hopefully so the primary breakdown of what I'm growing in the garden uh, pole beans bush beans okra kale spinach uh, I've got the white potatoes growing in there some beets and radish and carrots more as a test uh, the tomatoes that are in there and then hopefully peppers and eggplant as well those are the primary things and I'm mostly growing those because they have the shorter uh, germination to growth period because there are a lot of plants that they may take 30 40 days before you even start to see anything uh, spring up to know how they're going and at that point depending upon the weather if it's extremely hot and they're not a heat tolerant type of uh, plant that can cause them to either bolt and stop growing or it can simply kill them off before they've had a chance to fully develop. So I'm trying to do short term, faster growth items that I will be able to see ahead of time if they're doing well or not. So like I said, with the peppers that were back there, they're not looking like they're really doing that much. So I may end up switching out the one that's right now an empty bucket for something else that I can put in and I'll just, you know, mark off the time and start it over from there. But the primary thing, if you're growing in your garden, especially if you've got a small area or even you know, a small little patio or something, having things in different size buckets and baskets can give you that extra mobility that you may need in case you, one, have to move them out of that area for whatever the reason is. It might be general maintenance, cleaning, something like that. Or if there's some type of inclement weather coming that you don't want it to ruin the plants that you have, you can maybe bring them inside or cluster them together and then cover them. I have tarps set up in my uh, workshop that if I needed to, I can move the baskets and the uh, buckets and the barrels in close groups and then cover over them with the tarping that I have to at least protect them from, let's say, you know, a random chance that uh, freight cars full of toxic chemicals derails and explodes and, you know, goes up into the air. I don't want that type of residue and material coming down onto the plants as they're growing, getting into the soil and that sort of thing. So it's one of those things that you can consider that if you're doing direct sowing into the ground, something like that that happens, it may happen hundreds of miles away and days earlier and take a little bit longer to get to you. So it's something to be aware of. And even though I've got the beans in the ground, beans grow pretty fast and they're relatively easy to get a hold of. You can buy a bag of organic dried beans or organic beans in a supermarket and start a whole new batch right off the top from there. So there are advantages to certain types of vegetables that you grow. So for the most part, that's it for my garden right now. I'll do a few short videos detailing a little bit more about the individual setups and I'm going to do another video about the greenhouse once I've gotten that somewhat organized because it's, it, it's trash in there right now. I mean literal trash in there right now aside from the few things that I put in to start growing. So there's really nothing to show on that aspect of it. But I, as I said before, I'll be doing more videos coming out with uh, more of the small space gardening and you'll see the results, hopefully the improvement upon what I've planted and what's going on, any changes that I've made. All right, catch you in the next one.